Hi, I'm Judy Cole, the Executive Vice President and CEO of the MIT Alumni Association, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this web production of the MIT Alumni Association. Okay, uh, thanks Vijay. So uh, as Vijay said, it's really a very exciting time in education, uh, also uh, many challenges in higher education globally across the world. Uh, we're seeing an unmet demand for higher education at a scale never before. Across the nation, uh, we're struggling to meet challenges in access and affordability, while at the same time making sure that we maintain quality. And here at MIT, as uh, Vijay mentioned, we're really rethinking our education model, recognizing that we need to innovate the way in which we educate the next generation of leaders who are going to solve some of the world's most pressing problems. And I think uh, President Reif gave a really great sort of insight as to, as to how uh, we at MIT think about some of those things. So it's a challenging time, but it's also exciting because of the opportunities. And in particular, digital technologies are revolutionizing the way we teach. They're revolutionizing the way that we interact with students and even the way that we conceive of the structure of institutions of higher education. So I want to spend just a few minutes uh, talking about a couple of the projects that I'm leading here at MIT. These are projects that are developing educational technologies that are aiming both to improve teaching and learning here at MIT, but also uh, trying to, to help lead the way in educational innovation that will meet some of these challenges on the nationwide and the, and the global scale. Uh, the first project is uh, actually drawing inspiration from my own field of aerospace engineering. So I'm uh, course 16, Aero Astro. Uh, that's the fly-by-wire project. It's a project funded by the Department of Education, FIPSI First in the World program. You've broken the clicker, Vijay. We'll go manually. Okay. So uh, many of you may have heard of a fly-by-wire system in an aircraft. Uh, digital technologies have really revolutionized the way that pilots fly modern aircraft. And when you're flying, if you've ever looked out the wing at the aircraft, you've probably seen all the control surfaces on the wing, all the different surfaces of the wing that move. Um, they can move in, 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 in different rates and in, in different ways. And particularly if you look out the window when the aircraft is coming in on approach, coming in to land, you'll see these control surfaces moving constantly, constantly adjusting. And I don't know if you've ever wondered, you know, how is, it, how is that happening? There is no way that a human pilot could be controlling all those scores and scores of surfaces on the second by second instant. That's just too much load for a human to take. But instead, what you're seeing is this wonderful interaction between human pilot and digital technology. The human pilot is in control of the aircraft, putting in the, the controls to keep the aircraft on its smooth approach path. But then there's a computer that's using sensing, using real-time feedback, and using automatic control that's creating those low-level commands to make it happen the way that the pilot is controlling. And so that's, that's a really great example of humans and digital technologies working seamlessly together to achieve in an engineering system performance, robustness, and reliability, things that we could never do with a human alone. We're drawing on that inspiration to develop a fly-by-wire system in education, thinking in the same way, just as digital technologies help pilots to fly complex airplanes, how can digital technologies help teachers in the classroom uh, to navigate complex situations with many different learners? So our fly-by-wire educational system, it uses feedback, uh, uses sensing, real-time feedback that's accomplished through automated assessments that are served up to students on a student fly-by-wire app. It uh, uses adaptation through uh, sensing what's going on with the student and changing what the student will see in those assessments. And it's also uh, supplying feedback to the pilot, to the teacher, and helping them to orchestrate this overall experience in the, in the class. This is a project uh, where the technology is being developed here uh, by a lead team at MIT. But we're also working very closely with a number of partners. And you can see the partners up here. In particular, I want to highlight that we're working closely with two community colleges, with Arapahoe Community College in Colorado and with Quinsigamon Community College in, uh, here in, in Massachusetts. 
And uh, we're really targeting the community college because here's an example where students are coming in with very varied backgrounds. And in particular, we're looking at classes in college algebra, accounting, computer-aided design. These are classes where fundamental math skills are a real barrier to the students making it through their, their courses of study. Uh, but also where the students are coming in with very different levels of preparation based on their high school experience. Many of these students are returning to school, they're working part-time jobs. It could have been a very, very long time since they saw the math in their high school education. So uh, here's a great example of where this, I, these ideas of sensing, of real-time feedback, of adaptation, of digital technologies aiding the teachers can help us think about personalized education and improving completion rates uh, at, at scale. Okay, the, uh, the second uh, project that I just want to mention briefly is focus a little more on dealing with uh, data and education. So we're seeing in education data, as with many, many areas, uh, is just growing, growing by the moment. And the question is, how do we start get a to get a hold of the data to understand the relationships among different aspects of data and ultimately allow it to drive better decisions, data-driven decisions? Uh, so a number of projects in my group are looking at developing mapping technologies, so technologies that let us elicit the relationships among different aspects of data to visualize things, to uh, layer in analytics, and ultimately to help uh, to, to drive better decisions. And I'm going to show you one example of that. Uh, we've developed some technology that lets us do this, this mapping uh, at, at scale. And what you are looking at here uh, is something that, that maybe should be familiar to many of you. What we're looking at here is a vis visualization of the entire MIT undergraduate curriculum. And so we've modeled the curriculum as a graph. Does it bring back fond memories? <laughs> um, we, uh, we've modeled the entire curriculum as a graph. And so in our graph, the nodes are classes. The links between the nodes are prerequisite and co-requisite relationships among the classes. And uh, the clusters, in this case, are, are, are the departments. And so I know it's a little bit hard to read, but as you might expect, this is kind of a glimpse of MIT. What you see sitting in the middle here are the science GIRs, physics, math, uh, biology, chemistry, those, those classes that you all remember fondly, 1801, 1802, 801, 802, sitting right there in the middle, kind of defining what it is uh, to, 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 to participate in an MIT undergraduate education. In this particular map, there's a, a layer of analytics sitting on top with the coloring, and uh, what the blue nodes of this map show are the classes that are published on MIT's OpenCourseWare. OCW just celebrated its 15th birthday this year, and I think this visualization with all those blue nodes lighting up all the different classes really show, first, not what just a great offering of classes and diversity of departments we have here at MIT, but also how we have shared that with the world on mass, on scale, in scale uh, through, through open courseware. So this map is not just a one-off. Uh, as I mentioned, we're really trying to model here the curriculum in a scalable way as a graph. This now lets us uh, create other graphs to also bring in other layers of data, bring in different data sources, and start layering things on the map. So we could also start now analyzing questions, um, looking at the structure, the relationships in the graph, uh, looking at the pathways, asking questions about the most fundamental classes, asking questions about the structures of our degrees, maybe looking for opportunities for flexibility, for modularity, some of the recommendations that came out of the task force work. And the second plot, what we're seeing here is a visualization of the unit distributions across classes. So as uh, you well know, most classes at MIT have traditionally been 12 units. But uh, what we're seeing here in the blue nodes now are classes that are less than 12 units. And so you can see down the bottom here is uh, the, the Sloan School, which traditionally has used nine unit classes. But what you also start to see are smaller classes popping up, uh, particularly in the engineering school, in mechanical engineering, in civil, in, uh, civil and environmental engineering, and in chemical engineering. These are all departments that are moving towards a more modular structure. And if we start to now zoom in on the map, we can see here, looking at mechanical engineering, we could go in and start uh, querying these classes. And what we would see is that modularity, those uh, 
those six unit classes in this case are where mechanical engineering has taken the 2A program, broken a lot of traditional 12 unit classes into half semester, six unit classes, as a way to really offer their students more flexibility. So kind of exciting to think about uh, this sort of data-driven modeling and principles letting us uh, investigate what we're doing and, and ultimately uh, answer, ask and answer really important questions about our curriculum. We can also start looking at pathways. Again, I mentioned the prerequisite relationships, querying the graph, looking to see uh, what are the classes that lead to a particular class, either from the point of view as a faculty member or, or uh, as a student. So uh, those are just two examples, two examples of projects with educational technology. Uh, one example that shows how we might use educational technology, digital technologies, to change what we do in the classroom, to move towards more personalized, more adaptive, more effective instruction. Another example to show how we might use digital technologies and our engineering principles of modeling and data analysis and analytics to drive the decisions uh, both, again, on a class-by-class on a -class basis, but also looking across the, the institution. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us. For more information on future MIT Alumni Association productions, please visit our website.